You may think your hotel is already green, but are you green enough for today's eco-conscious traveler? Welcome to the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast, your destination to learn from hospitality professionals on the value and opportunities sustainability will bring to your organization. It will put more heads in beds and lower costs at the same time. We are your hosts and sustainable hospitality experts, Kathy McGuire and Amy Walls. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast. We are thrilled today to be joined with Dr. Jim Gilkey, president of S4 NetQuest. Thank you so much for making time to be here today and tell our audience why training is so critical to deploying a sustainability endeavor. Yeah, well, thanks for having me, first of all. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, training is important to anybody, right? We, we feel at S4 that, the, that training, when done correctly, can be a competitive advantage for an organization. When you look at sustainability, it's fairly new relative to other types of training. Uh, I don't believe that you could have an effective sustainability program without effective training because it starts at the top but goes all the way down to every associate, not only being trained on the technical aspects of how to ensure sustainability, recycling, whatever those things might be, but the messaging and letting uh, travelers know exactly what you're doing and the effect you're having as an organization. And it's interesting that you say top down because it is top down, but you know, we feel, Kathy and I, that it's just as important bottom up because it's really those people touching and talking with the guests every day that can um, convey how important sustainability is to that organization, which builds trust, loyalty, you know, so many great things come of it. But before we get all into all the ooey gooey stuff about training and sustainability, tell us a little bit about your really, really interesting background, Jim. Sure. So I actually started in aviation. Uh, my undergrad at Ohio State was in aviation. It was a four-year degree. And you come out with all the ratings necessary to become a commercial pilot, which is what I thought I was going to do. Trained at United on the 767. Oh, wow. Tons of fun. Not what I wanted to do for a living. How come? Um, a lot of things. Uh, scheduling. Uh, it's, it's, it's one dimensional to a certain aspect. Like I said, really, really fun. Great experience. What I actually found out in training with United was I love training. Loved it. So I actually returned to Ohio State, completed my uh, doctorate in instructional design and technology, and actually ran the flight education division for several years. So oh. training aviators at the flight school, as well as teaching on campus as well. Loved it. Really interesting. It's funny how you look back and everything sequences into, you know, kind of where you find yourself now. I don't know if you know, but I used to work on cruise ships. And the whole reason I am in sustainability now was because of those days on ships. But we won't get into that. Let's get into the nitty gritty of why training is so critical to a sustainability endeavor that any hospitality or tourism organization would take on. So in your, gosh, 20, 25 years of working and training, um, and it's all different kinds of industries, correct? A lot of different kinds of industries, uh, a lot of focus in medical, okay. pharma, etc. But we've also done financial services, we've done some hospitality. Retail. So, yeah, retail, yeah. Yep. Crosses, yeah. So what kind of impact have you seen training create for an organization that you've worked with? When done correctly, um, it's measurable business results. A lot of people look at training and measure it by what we call smile sheets. Did you like the training? Did you like the donuts? Did you like the facilitator? That kind of stuff. That's not what you want to measure. What you want to be able to measure is how did that behavioral change that occurred during the training, how is that helping the organization? Mm -hmm. um, and again, from a sustainability standpoint, I'm not sure there's a more critical aspect of that. Once the strategy is in place, training is what's going to make that come to life. And I believe it's the next step. It has to be the foundation. Wouldn't you agree? It's absolutely foundational. As we talked about before, uh, you talked about the bottom up. Mm -hmm. Those folks are the ones that are interacting with the customers. Yeah. Those are the ones that are really doing the things 
that the customer sees. Yeah. And the better trained they are, the, the more successful that program's gonna be. You know, I'm a sustainability traveler, if you will, and interacting with those folks and understanding what is going on, why they're doing it, and really what the impact is that they're having with their program, that's critical to me and who I would select when I travel. Yeah, that growing demand, that eco-traveler, the traveler looking specifically for that type of um, stay, if you will, is, is growing by the day. And uh, I, I definitely agree with you. I think training is so critical. We talked about the importance of training um, and how critical that is to convey to the guest, which again, as a sustainability you know, expert, if you will, I believe that's one of the biggest missing pieces. As I have traveled around, you know, I see all of these very complex initiatives happening behind the scenes, but a lot of times that's not being conveyed to the guests. And the guest really wants to be part of that journey. Um, you know, that is what helps build connection with that brand and that individual traveler. But when, when you think about training, I think, you know, we all know the struggles and the time constraints and the resource constraints with, um, let's say, a general manager of a hotel. And the thought of taking on one more project is, you know, just overwhelming, especially in these times. And I think when they think about training, they're worried that is going to take a lot of time. It's going to take a lot of resources. And so like any industry, they really try to cut corners sometimes or they think it's not something that's really going to impact um, their organization. Talk to me about, you know, what happens if you bypass that step and what can happen if you really take the time? Um, and, and is it really a huge amount of time that someone needs or an extensive amount of time that someone needs to take on training? Yeah, time's going to vary depending on what it is you're trying to do. I will say this, all of us have been exposed to training throughout our lives. Most of it is bad. That's the problem. It's not that people don't want to take time to learn. It's that people don't want to take time to do crappy training. That's what it comes down to, right? Yeah. And We have look, all been through crappy training in our lives. Most right? of it is, yeah. literally. Most of it is not very effective. And one of the reasons that is is that Subject matter experts, the people that know the stuff, that know the content, critical to good training, but they're also asking those individuals to design it. See, that's my background, instructional design. So okay. my doctorate is in, right? We know how people learn, and we know how people learn across different media, like computer-based training. Subject matter experts don't know that, but they're the ones that are charged with doing it because they have the content knowledge. So sure. what do they do? They stand up in front of a class with PowerPoints, Right? Yeah. And everything they say is on the PowerPoint. And then they give you the PowerPoints afterwards and say, here's a training manual. Right? That's what we call traditional, not effective, especially with the new generations, millennials, Gen Zs. They're not going to sit in training and listen to people lecture. So will they take the time? You're going to have to take the time for the sustainability programs. It's not going to work if not. So how much time? Well, the more effective the training, the less time it's going to take. Okay, that's good to know. You have to design it to be effective. Yeah. And the way you do that is around things like, what can you do to make it engaging? Um, again, if you look at some of the generations, they want to do gaming. They want to engage in it. Give them problems to solve. You're not reading material to spit back on a test. That's never going to give you the competitive advantage we were talking about earlier. Yeah. It's got to be effective. When it's effective, you're applying it. When you're applying it, you're getting a competitive advantage. Really great stuff. And I was going to ask you, what does that training look like, let's say, for a hospitality organization? But you just you answered that question. So a lot of gaming, a lot of different types of formats that it would come in, correct, depending on you know, the role of that employee or that manager. Is that right? Lots of different formats. Most people think of it, again, somebody standing in front of a class. One of the things that you're going to want to do with the sustainability group is what we call structured field experiences. Okay. Give them foundational knowledge, but then have them practice applying that in the field, real world stuff. Uh, have people evaluate that. Give them feedback. Another critical thing is tools, right? 
give them performance support tools that allow them to know step by step what they're supposed to do, mm -hmm. especially initially. And then after a while, as they get good at it, they won't need the tools anymore. But that helps them apply it, apply it more quickly, apply it more effectively. So in the field training, let's talk about it practically. Um, what does that look like in a hotel, someone's training? Does that mean someone role plays? There's a guest, there's an employee, um, and maybe the employee is explaining a specific you know, um, charity that they donate to or um, waste removal that they're doing or something behind the scenes that's going on. Is, does, is that right? You can do role play. Okay. You know, you do a lot of that in training. Salespeople do it all the time. One of the issues with role playing is um, it, it, it isn't necessarily specific to a, a particular objective. Okay. Know? So one of the things we use in this type of training is what we call analysis. Like watch this video of the manager greeting the customer when they come in. And we want you to evaluate that interaction based on this set of criteria, problem-based learning, right? And what you can do in those videos is you can have specific things that either go right or specific things that go wrong. They're evaluating that so they can pick it out. The other thing that's critical when you use video like that is that you can really see how bad I don't want to be that person. Yeah. And when you think about just something as simple as greeting the customer when they come in, especially a sustainable traveler, an eco-traveler like me, I want to know right off the bat. I want something to show me I've come to the right place mm -hmm. and, and then I'm going to have an impact yeah. and they're helping me do that. And yeah. it really gives you that immediate connection with the brand. Again, I'm, I'm so passionate about that because... I feel like you really have to have a di differentiator in today's competitive marketplace. And this is one really great way to do it. Um, so training is, is gonna be crucial. So you've talked a lot about being a sustainable traveler or eco-traveler yourself. That is great to hear. Give me an example of a, a really standout experience that you had um, at maybe a sustainable property that you visited in the past. Absolutely, that's an easy one. I was traveling around Bali. Okay. And every place I stayed had a sustainability program, right? There was one in particular, first of all, beautiful location, set on the cliffs, looking over the ocean, smaller venue. But what I couldn't believe is the level that they had gone to. For instance, the owner who I met, I think originally from Germany, had actually created a water purification system so the wastewater, and I'm talking wastewater, they could actually purify that to the level we couldn't drink it, but you could put it on the plants. Oh, yeah. So that was one thing, the, the degree that they had gone to to be actually sustainable. Sure. The other thing was, it's what you said earlier, the training aspect. The first thing when I entered the, uh, the hotel, um, they let me know immediately, you know, my room, what was sustainable about it, uh, all the things we talked about, right? To have that initial impact to the point, like I said, where they eventually gave me a tour, which is when I found out about this whole water purification system. Everybody was so well trained in both letting me know the impact they were having, which is what I want to know, um, as well as, of course, great customer service. That combination, that's what I'm looking for. And when was that, Jim? That was several years back. Gosh, time flies for me now. Probably five years ago, something like that. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious because, you know, um, Bali is doing a lot of things, but to have people well-versed in it at an employee level where then they're conveying that to the guests, that they must have been very progressive. So Very progressive. And another thing that, that you've mentioned to me before in discussions we've had is when people think about sustainability, they think environment, right? The other thing about this particular place was how they included all the individuals there, right? They made sure that it was going to fit in. I think there were indigenous tribes there. They had to make sure that that was going to work in to their culture and their way of life, as well as helping them economically. So, you know, you look at training, you look at all the things that need to happen with sustainability, but it's also a much broader concept than simply environmental considerations, and you know that better than anybody. 
So Jim, you didn't mention the name of that. I would love to give them a plug and I'd love to look them up and see what they're doing today. Gosh, they were doing that five or so years ago. Wonder what they're doing now. What What's the name of that? I believe it was Hotel. called Shinyada Villas, if I'm not mistaken. In Bali. In Bali. Okay, yeah. all right, well, we'll look for that. Look them up. Thank you so much. Awesome. I'm always you know, interested in learning about new places and really progressive. Um, places and God knows Bali needs all the help from the over tourism they have going on there but last I want to make sure we're so thankful you were here that we give you a plug and you know you talk a lot about impactful learning yes. and you actually have a book on that which is called impact learning it is impact learning the next competitive advantage okay. which is what we think good learning can do the thing about that book it's not academic that's not what's designed for so when you think of these managers, uh, people working in the hospitality industry, mm -hmm. that book, for instance, gives you tips, tricks, uh, immediate application of how to create and ensure effective learning. So, you know, someone could read this. It's not, it's not very thick. It would be a quick read, maybe even in an evening. Um, and it would maybe help people avoid some mistakes. Definitely avoid the mistakes of the traditional people standing up yeah. and lecturing. And it's funny you say that, Amy, because we actually designed the book to be read on a plane. Ah. That an exec could read it on a plane. Smart. And we actually have some summary boxed um, uh, types of critical um, things to consider, etc. So it can be an hour and a half read. It can be a half hour read. Um, and you're still going to get a lot out of it, hopefully. Wonderful. Well, is there anything else we can do to support you? I want to make sure that people go out and get your book, Dr. Jim Gilkey from S4 NetQuest. Um, it sounds like you've got the training thing figured out, and hopefully um, some people are going to pay attention to the things you say and grab your book. Anything else? Last minute notes? No, I appreciate the, the conversation today. And again, uh, people need to realize there's an ever growing population of folks that are gonna demand that these hospitality uh, organizations within that interest industry have some type of sustainability program. And so if they're not doing it, they better start doing it because they're getting behind every day. We feel that way and we really hope that we are giving you practical tips and ways to start down that sustainability journey. So whatever you do, make sure you keep tuning back in to the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast. You like and you subscribe and there's going to be more really good stuff to come over the next few months um, and, and year. So thanks again for tuning in and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us today on the Sustainable Hospitality Podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. And if you'd like a free consultation on becoming a much greener hotel, please visit us at sustainablehospitalitypodcast.com.